Hello everyone. What's your goal for the year? Well, if you're anything like me, you'll be tired of waiting for files to load, laggy video streams, and just running out of storage space. So that's mine. I want bandwidth and storage just everywhere. So if last year was about getting cables under control with my underwear, well, I want to start this year by focusing on what goes through it. Modern maker hobbies are becoming more and more fueled by data. Being able to load that file and cut or laser that design from years ago is just great. Even if you're using traditional tools, you're still streaming data because it's super handy to be able to watch that sewing video or follow that plan. If you're working from home, watching TV, playing VR, listening to music or making anything else, it all relies on streaming of data across the home. People increasingly are getting fed up with the cost, spammy complexity and security of cloud services. So I can see more and more turning back towards local cloud storage of your files. All this is going to put more and more strain on my aging home server. So I want a home system that doesn't just host my files. I want one that eats files for breakfast and spits them out like terabytes of fire. I want one that burns through media files at such a pace, it'll need a cage just to hold it back. Welcome to the start of my home office redesign. Okay, you can't see much from this angle. But for many of us, the home office has changed radically in the last 10 years or so. The chances are you or someone you know spends a lot more time here than in any other room. Working, gaming, creating, designing, or just staying connected. There's also been a layering of technology that's invaded. PCs, multi-monitors, speakers, tablets, Qi chargers, USB hubs, and all of these have spawned attached technology. But if you're going to build a proper home office for any of this, the beating heart of it is your NAS. It's more than just storage. It keeps your photos, videos, film collections, eBooks, and all your important files at your fingertips. Yes, that's true, but it's not just that because a good NAS powers your entire home. So there's no better place to start than the home for my NAS. Now, this video it will be jam-packed with information that I hope will inspire your thinking. Starting with my new powerhouse NAS server as the heart of my smart home, to the modular smart cabinet that I've built to house it, that is the start of my open source cabinet system that I'm building. Oh, and a bunch of crafting along the way. So let's start with the NAS itself. Now the TVS H874 NAS from QNAP created quite a few ripples on its release. Most people see Synology as having the slight edge on software and QNAP on hardware. But I think someone at QNAP must have said, hardware, I'll show you hardware. Even the real experts like NAS Compares struggled to really challenge it. He shows it running an Ubuntu VM, Windows VMs, streaming a 400 megabit 4K 10-bit video and another copy, running a container of Jellyfin and running security cameras through it. And the CPU runs at not even a quarter of its full power. It's just lazing. He describes this as the monster, the ultimate NAS, and sits running 8K Plex through it whilst it just looks at him like nothing's happening. So when I say it's powerful, I mean it. 
I've gone with the 12th gen Intel i5 processor, giving 6 cores and 12 threads. You can actually buy up to i9 processors for this NAS, if you're clinically insane. It's got 32 gigabytes of RAM, but you can fit 128 gigabytes if you want. And they've done all of this with amazing power consumption. This sits at around 45 watts in standby, and typical use was around 85 watts. It's got space for eight drives, so I put eight in. But if I wanted more in future, I can add up to 24 more with expansion bays. And this is just the general feel with QNAP. They're just creating capacity everywhere, just in case it helps you in future. With my Synologies, on the other hand, I was just finding them increasingly the opposite. And their ridiculous hard drive compatibility warnings for non-Synology drives. Bye-bye, Synology. I've used Seagate drives for over 15 years now, with dozens around the house at any time. But for NAS use, you want a different breed of drive to the standard ones that you slot into your PC. You want optimised power consumption, super high reliability, and it needs to be able to take a battering as it will be getting constant use, and none of the sleep time that your normal discs get. So Iron Wolf drives are what I've used for about 10 years now, and they're awesome to rely on for everything. Oh, and another neat feature of this unit is there's space for two NVMe drives. So here I've slotted two Kingston NVMe drives, two terabytes each, and these are PCIe 4 drives, so they're able to flame roast your files at up to 7,000 megabytes a second read and write. I've stuck the OS and apps on one, and then I've kept the other as a cache drive. This actually has a hidden benefit, as these drives have a much lower power profile. It's about 9 watts under heavy load, whereas firing up the RAID 6 array would take around 72 watts. Then factor in these drives can read data way faster. It becomes a simple way to reduce power usage for common files that you're accessing 24-7. And of course, I wanted to have a couple of 10 gig ports. I can also plug in a USB drive and get similar 10 gig connectivity. I have absolutely no need right now, but it even has space to plug in a graphics card if you want. This will still be front of the pack in five years time, but I love all the flexibility and upgradability of the design. It's just got space everywhere that you look. It's been designed to expand and not to constrain. With things like the AI chip built into this, Powerful hardware is now taking over the job that software used to do. In other words, by pushing so far ahead in the hardware battle, QNAP have given themselves a killer edge in software. QMAGI, which is QNAP's multimedia application, is a neat little app. But it's really the fact that it leverages all the great hardware that makes it burn. Just to demonstrate that, I'm flicking through about 12 terabytes of photos here, and it just doesn't care. In fact, it's run AI recognition across all of them, so it's bringing back photos with my face. Or I can also search by other terms like food that it's automatically recognized, and I could do locations or whatever. It means that all those photos you took but can never find again can easily be accessed in an instant. The same applies to the pretty immense range of security camera software, facial recognition, object recognition, just easy. So naturally, I couldn't just put a device like this in any old IKEA cabinet. This is the sort of thing that deserves a throne. Now cabinets haven't changed in decades, and they have all these inherent problems that mean they're really not that good for pretty much any modern electronics, whether it's your NAS, your PlayStation or anything. As a result, I've designed a new generation of modular cabinet that tackled all the problems that I saw in traditional units. The whole thing is parametric, so I can adjust the shape to build other drawers and units in here in seconds. And then my CNC just 
cuts everything for me. But not just that, this NAS cabinet has active cooling. Like any electronic devices, NASes generate some heat. So we need to bring in cool air and push out the hot. Smart sensors. I don't want to be sitting digging through control panels, so it needs to alert me to problems intelligently. Smart lighting. Cabinets are dingy, dark holes usually, which is terrible for finding where that USB cable should go. But not just that, these lights can show hard disk capacity and case temperatures and more. It's modular. How many times have you tried to fish that plug through the back of your cabinet or be drilling a hole in shelves to fish the wires? This design is ready for anything. And it's very, very cable managed. The whole thing needs to be ready for whatever the future may throw. So after a brief montage of designing and CNCing and epoxying and drilling and bashing and wiring and painting and 3D printing and vacuuming, here's what I made. The cabinet is totally smart. Every second it is reporting its temperature, humidity, dust levels, noise levels, fan speeds, and dozen more sensors to be stored in home assistant. This includes a battery of sensors from the QNAP drive itself, which integrates beautifully. As a result, it can alert me on my PC, on my phone, or any other device throughout the house as needed. But not only that, these LEDs are also connected to Home Assistant so they can reflect various settings. This means the cabinet is too hot. This means it's cool. If there's a problem with a particular device, it can show you. It can show you how full the total volume is on the NAS itself, the network saturation, CPU usage, anything you want really. This flexibility is so handy. I can just drop in a new device and then the LEDs at this spot can start updating me on its state, health, anything I want. It uses an Apollo air sensor to monitor cabinet temperature, dust levels, and WLED is powering all the LEDs. So shout out to the wonderful WLED project. I've actually bought Dig2Go LED kits for this. Just plug into a USB port in your way. So do check out this great open source project. Every shelf and the whole back is packed with access hatches. These are easy to add now and then add blanking plates, which I've 3D printed. This means it will always be super flexible no matter what I do. I can just 3D print a grommet and pull wires wherever I want. The shelves themselves are modular and every shelf has built-in fans in these 3D printed cases to breathe cool air through the cabinet. And of course, making it myself let me have some fun with the design. So I CNC'd this dragon and lion detail on the front doors to give it some unique character. This allows the light to shine through, so if there was a problem with the NAS, the red glow would be immediately visible. Everything is connected to a UPS down here, and I've included a dash of underwear to allow nice cable management at the back. Now the eagle eyed amongst you will notice that I haven't filled these areas with epoxy. I was originally planning on using tights or pantyhose as a filter in these spots. Go and see the first video I ever made for why that's a good idea. But having now seen the beautiful light shining through the epoxy windows, I don't want to col the colour of the tights to spoil the aesthetics. So I'm going to build some vents in the top and the bottom of the unit, but let me know if you can think of any clever ideas to build in some vents in a more hidden spot. I'll also add door handles on once I've got a better idea of what I want the whole study to look like. Apart from this, the unit is pretty much done. I've got oodles of space for other devices and future components, and having plugged it in, it's not the NAS that's faster. It's everything. Every click on my PC, every video that I'm watching, every photo I'm viewing across the whole house. So if you're looking to redesign your home office, then maybe start with your NAS. 
Thanks to QNAP, Seagate and Kingston for all their awesome devices and to the open community like WLED and Home Assistant for their brilliant software. And a special shout out to all the amazing Discord gang who chipped in with ideas from suggesting that I look at QNAP originally when I was grumbling about my old setup to all the great ideas you've provided for both this cabinet and my upcoming rack mount version for another room. As I mentioned, this cabinet is my test for my upcoming parametric system that will let you quickly build drawers and cabinets for your whole home. Instant gridfinity sized, underwear integrated, modern units, anyone? They're coming soon. Oh, and Patreons, I plan to go into a bit more detail on the build of this cabinet, so I'll upload a video on that in the next few weeks. See you next time.